the Holy Spirit working within us with all the messages that we got and all the, the responses in our hearts. I'm really glad that we were all here together. Um, I wanted to share with you what my experiences has been with preparing for this um, this um, weekend. You know, I was looking at the verses. If you can open your Bibles to the Gaugau for this week, for this weekend, it's in Second Timothy. Second Timothy, and I'm not quite sure if you all had a chance to like really read through it and, and study it and really let you know contemplate on it before coming to the camp and then coming to the camp, seeing what are the messages that um, God has for you. So, who has really read through it and thought about it before coming? Honest. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, I think today I'd like to come to you with the Word of God in verse 19 and 20. And let's just read it together. And read it slow. 20 and 21. Uh, yeah, okay, 20 and 21. Sorry. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Now, I think that's very kind of confusing uh, in some of the verbiage there. And as I was reading it before coming to camp, I thought, well, what's all this about honor and then dishonor? And God made us all, and how is it that he's made us some for dishonor? And um, so I looked through many different uh, versions and many different translations to get a better idea. And um, I wanted to read to you uh, another, a little bit of a translation, but it says here that in a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be the utensil God can use for his purpose. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. So in there, that one, I kind of understood it a little bit more. And I wanted to break it down with you really quickly is that, you know, in that house, in the master's house, he's had vessels of all different kinds and of different value. Okay? So some are, are really expensive, some are, are inexpensive, but they're all his and they're all being used somehow but when um, and when they're used remember the the more expensive ones are used for special occasions and the more commonly used ones are used for everyday use okay so when they when he says here when they're being used depends on their character what they're made of so that's he decides when to use those things okay so that's up to God but if they're used at all let's say you're made of gold, but you're not being used, it's because you're unclean, okay? So if they're being used at all, it depends on if they're clean or not. Okay? So I wanted to go back, so as I studied that, I said, well, you know, I really still don't quite understand that, and I took the verses right before that, which was verse 19 and verse 20, if you have your Bibles open. But it says, but God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription, which means God's truth is so set in stone that it doesn't change. And the two truths that he points out is, one, God knows those who are his. God knows those who are his. That means us. Our, our friends, our families may not know that we're Christians, but God knows that we're Christians. And because he knows we're Christians, he's called us to be different okay, in our secret lives in times when we're not at camp, in times when we're not at church, our actions should follow what he wants us to do. Okay? And then the second truth that he points out is, those who claim they belong to the Lord must turn away from all wickedness. Which means, 
If we are to call ourselves Christians, we have to try to stay away from sin. We have to try. We will, most of us will get trapped in it once in a while, more often than not some. But what we do need to know is that mindset is we have to try to stay away from sin. And how does the two verses hit together, tie together? Do you guys have any? It, hits, it ties together in the sense that if you want to be used, if you want to be a vessel that's going to be used for God's glory, you're going to have to keep yourself clean. You're going to have to stay away from sin. And a lot of us are like, well, what's the purpose of my life? I don't feel I'm meeting the purpose of my life yet. Well, maybe because we're not keeping our lives clean and God isn't using us to our potential. It's like a vessel. It could be a really nice, beautiful gold vessel, but if it's not clean, God's not going to use it. Or he may use it in a different use. Let's say it's not used to put flowers in, but it's used to, you know, hold the door open or something like that, you know. And so a lot of times we feel like our lives, we don't feel like we're getting to the purpose of what we're, what we're made for. And I think that we're made all for different purposes. And I realize that as I read this, that I'm different from all of you guys, and you guys are all different from each other in how God has made us. So some of us, don't be surprised that some of us will be made for much glorier things, you know, much bigger things. And some of us will be made for more common things. But that doesn't matter because God made us all. He's made us for that particular purpose. So it doesn't matter what the, our purpose is, I mean, what we're actually being used for, but whether we're being used at all is the key. Sometimes we're made beautiful, but he's not going to use us. He's definitely not going to use us if we're unclean. Okay, so... If I'm going to be used for God's purpose, it's up to me to keep myself pure. And so this brings back to the, the topic of yesterday, of being tolerant of sin. If I see sin in my life, I have to not tolerate that so that I can be pure for Him. So that I can be more pure, so that I can meet the, the purposes of my life. I have to keep myself pure. And if I have to try to keep myself pure, I should welcome when other people try to correct me. I should welcome the fact that people will come and say, that's not right, so that I can someday meet the purposes of my life. Okay? And then also, the last thing is, not only will people come your way, but like Robert said last night, situations will come your way. That fire, those uh, trials, uh, fire by trials, um, trials by fire, um, will come your way. And if you look at those trials as this situation is going to force me to face my sins and force me to change like Robert did. He ended up in jail and because it forced him in there he had to face that sin of his and because he faced it and he was willing to change then he's here today with us this weekend. Okay, So he can be used for God's glory. So at this point, I'd like for us to kind of just stop and think about these things, meditate on this on your own for just a couple minutes, and then maybe go into just a few together and pray with each other as far as, you know, am I meeting the needs of, uh, am I meeting the, the purposes that God has set for me? And if I don't feel it yet, pray that he will make that clear to you what that purpose is. Uh, but I think a lot of it will depend on you on keeping yourself pure. And pure not in not only in what you do, but how you think, your attitudes, okay? So I pray that we have taken this few min moments together, um, just in silence, pray for ourselves. Think about the things that I've said, think about what the Word of God has presented to you, and then we'll sit, uh, split out just a few together and pray with each other, okay? Let's just close our eyes in silence.